It was Kona's birthday yesterday. Hey, buddy. You wanna go walkies? Hey, everyone. Long time no see. So I'm doing a question and answer video today because I realize I haven't done one in a really long time. So I asked on Twitter what questions y'all have for me and I got some really good ones. There is a giveaway on this video. It is Dave Shang's latest book. So if you would like to be a part of that, then stick around to the end for details. So I have pre-selected some questions already. Um, I'm going to go through them and then at the very end, there's gonna be a rapid fire round where I'm just gonna go through and answer just some of the quick ones. So the first question comes from Barry Lemon or Barry Lelthreemon. What do you think helped you the most to land in your first tech job? Internships or networking? So I got my internships through networking. So I guess networking is was the most helpful thing. I had a really bad GPA in college. And so I wasn't going to shine in my academics so that I knew that I had to establish relationships with people who were already working at companies so that I could get internships at them. Luckily, I was part of a student org where there were other computer science majors and there were computer science majors who were older than me. So when they went to work at full-time jobs, then I would ping them and be like, hey, are you looking for interns? If so, can I give you my resume? Um, and that was really, really helpful. Because at the end of the day, if I even think about like as a full-time software engineer now, if I had an intern, who would I hire? I would most likely reach out to the people that I know already who are in college, who I trust and know and have a relationship with. So if you think about it that way, the networking is extremely important and very, very valuable. Okay, so the next question comes from Bruno. He asks, how important is written communication as a software engineer? Do you think that's something that people should give more importance as they grow as engineers? Short answer, uh, heck yes. <laughs> this is one of the skills that I didn't work on in college and I really regret that because I was like, I'm a computer science major. Why would I need to do reading and writing? That's stupid. Uh, but turns out it's a really, really, really important part of the job. So when it comes to software engineering, part of it is about figuring out what the right solution is and then coding it. But another huge part of it is to articulate the solution to other people. This is incredibly important because if you write a piece of code that maybe then they it's like somebody finds a bug in, then you can't be the only person who knows how to read and write that code. That creates what we call a bus factor, AKA if something were to happen to you tomorrow, then that part of the code is completely unknown and it's really hard to understand. So it's really, really important that you are able to articulate your ideas and solutions super well. And that goes from everything from how to name variables to writing documentation to just like documenting your thoughts so that you can maybe, you know, propose a solution to people. Whenever I'm going to start working on a big project, then I'm always going to write out some documentation at first so that I can talk about the solution with other engineers to get their opinion to see if this really is the right solution. I think this is actually like a whole like thing, like technical writing or technical documentation. I'm sure some universities have some classes on that. Next question. So Jace asks, what core actions do or did you take to meet some of your personal values? That's a really good question. I'm not sure that I actually like went on a journey to find my personal values so much as that like I figured out what my personal values are through experiences that I've had. I, I, I didn't like put myself in situations and stuff to figure out what they are. I think whenever conflict arises and decisions need to be made, then those are the times that I feel like I reflect on what's important to me and like what my core values are. It can be something as big as, should I work at this company? Should I move here? Do I wanna live with these people? Or something as small as, do I buy the regular groceries or the organic groceries? <laughs> but I do think that putting yourself out there and putting yourself in situations where you're stretching out of your comfort zone is a really, really great way to figure out what your personal values are. I also think that sometimes you just need to let your brain sit in a process. And so sometimes I'll just sit on the train and listen to music and just stare out the window, just thinking about my life. But yeah, I think that processing is super important. And so, I don't know, make sure you give yourself time to do that, especially when we're in such a high output society. Next, S. Wis Coast asks, how much time a week do you spend on staying up to date with new technologies? Um, I don't actually reserve time to like stay up to date with new technologies. I stay up to date with new technologies as needed. 
the thing that I really like about technology and working in tech is not so much the technology itself as it is the fact that technology enables you and other people to do things that you couldn't do before. So I'm not really like the intense type to go and read documentation for fun. Like, do people even do that? But I do stay up to date like relatively well. Going to meetups, going to talks and stuff gives me some more information about what people are talking about and so I make sure to like stay plugged into those channels. And then also at work when we're working on a new project and we have the chance to really think about what the right solution is and what tools we should use, then I'll go through and deep dive into some new technologies to see if they're like the right fit for what we're trying to do. But it is true that the tech world is always reinventing itself and so there's always new technologies. And so I think more so than like learning new technologies and doing like that homework, it's more about being open-minded and flexible and not married to any one technology that's more important. Anthony asks, in your personal or work life, how do you deal with stress slash feeling overwhelmed? Great question. So stress and feeling overwhelmed happens when what work you have in front of you feels too much, like you can't hold on to it and you don't know if you can do all of it. And so the thing that honestly helps me the most is to process. Sometimes, like I'll oftentimes just put a pause on it and just be like, okay, hold on, like before I dive into doing all these things or before the time comes, let me just sit with my feelings and my thoughts a little bit and figure out like why am I stressed and why am I feeling overwhelmed? I'm a highly introspective person and so figuring out like, hey, is there some sort of thing that I'm worried about that underlies all of this? And what is it and why am I so afraid of it? In a way, I kind of give myself like a mini therapy session, if you will. And yeah, I'll figure out like, hey, can I actually do all of this? Are all of these things important for me to do? Can I drop some of them? Can I lean on someone else for help? Like those are all things that I do to figure out like how can I sort my feelings basically. I will say it is a very common thing for me to feel stressed and overwhelmed and I'm still trying to get better at processing them and figuring out what the right solution is, like almost quicker because I think when I get stressed and feel overwhelmed, I get very like, I get very low and it takes a long time for me to come back up. Actually, I think I'm in one of those bouts right now, but you know, life is a process, everything's a process, everything will be okay, everything will be okay. Okay, next question. Haley, I'm 22, about to graduate college. Does there ever come a point when you actually feel like an adult in life? Yeah. I'm not sure when I first felt it though. It might've been like 21 when I started needing to pay my own rent and get renter's insurance and get car insurance. Like when insurance things comes up, oh, health insurance too, that's when I feel a little bit more like an adult. But the times where I feel like, oh my God, I'm like a full blown adult and I can't go back is when I have like too many errands and things to do on the weekend just to like live. So like grocery shopping or just like going to the post office or just like being completely responsible for yourself is when I feel most like an adult. And I'm 25 now and I still feel like I don't want to be an adult and sometimes the pressure of being an adult in today's society is like overwhelming. But that's why it's important to take one step at a time and to meditate and to surround yourself with the people who make you a better person and who are really important to you. So it's okay, you got this. Although there are some really good parts of adulting like yesterday I just made a bag of popcorn just cause I could. And I ate all of it. Okay, so we're gonna go into the rapid fire round. Lynn asks, what camera do you use to make videos? Most of the time I use my Canon G7X, which I'm using right now, and I use an external Zoom H1 mic. I also have a Rebel T5i uh, by Canon, but I use my G7X way more because it's a lot easier to set up and use. Manny Sandoval asks, if you hadn't been a programmer, what other career would you have chosen? I would have chosen to be a teacher. My parents are both teachers. I'm really passionate about educating and teaching and growing people and that is super cool. So that's what I would have chosen. And then he asked, also, how did you start listening to Natalia Lafourcade? I started listening to her because my brother recommended me to her and he found out from another friend of his. I've also started listening to Monsieur Perrinet, which is super good. And I'm going to Natalia's concert in November and I am psyched. John Choi asked Crazy Rich Asians reactions, which is great because I just watched it two nights ago. Uh, I think it was great. I think it was deep. I think it was kind of rom com which I'm not super married to, sort of. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I just like cried. I, like it was so good. I felt so lucky to have been able to see it in theaters 
and to like support fellow Asian American and Asian actors. And I feel also fortunate to be a part of this YouTube community too, where I get to do something sort of similar. So yeah, oh, I, I really liked it. I recommend everyone to go watch it. Okay, so Kino Shijona asked in Japanese, so I'll put English subs down here. ご両親は日本のどこら辺のご出身でしょうか私の両親は関西出身なんで、え、お父さんが大阪と奈良出身で、お母さんが神戸出身なんですよ。で、私はアメリカ生まれ育ちなんですけど、あの、ま、家の中